personally, if I wanted to experience what the book's about, then I would grab, you know, there's two, there's different ways of doing it. You could read the book and get the gist of the book and not do the activations and just read the book so that you're receiving the information. And then at another occasion, do all the activations until you've got them. Then you'll have got the gist of the book without sort of trying to do the activation and then wondering what's on the next page or where do I go next? So I would tend to encourage people read the book, get the overall thing and then do the activations or do one activation as you're going through the book. But then if you really want to embrace what the book's about, then go back and do the activations until you've got them until they're part which most people struggle with that sort of commitment because you know you could probably read the book you know it's not a long book you could probably read the book in a few hours you know if you did the activations maybe take a week but if you wanted to actually embrace that lifestyle and experience everything probably take you a month or more you know if you Mm -hmm. really wanted each out because i don't know how many activations are in there there's probably about Mm -hmm. 10 12 or more i don't know yeah, quite a few, so, yeah. in a sense if you really wanted to live those activations so they really become part of you then i would then focus on that rather than the information in the book and do it at the same time because otherwise you'd get stuck and you'd be probably wanting to go on in the book but you haven't got the thing so i would do probably okay. do them separately if i if i was you know saying how do i do this you know, I would probably do it separately and yeah. finish the book, get the idea of it and then then engage it in a different way. Because I think most people, if life's busy, we've got a lot of time, you know, to do, we're doing all sorts of things in our lives. You know, if you think, oh, you know, I'm going to take a month to assimilate this information, a lot of people will be put off even with the thought of it, you know, mm-hmm. you know, but you know that that's really how we learn that's how yeah. our senses are trained by repetition practice going over it you know and then who, who knows god may open up that to become for you a something that you can just do whenever you know i learned i mean i've i've put in you know whatever 16 years i suppose in that type of experience and then before that i learned how to meditate in terms of how to focus on a bible verse and draw from it the thoughts of the spirit out of that verse you know for for many years and then learn how to visually see something that you know so i I had a long lead up time up Mm -hmm. to 2008 probably if i go back to when i first meditation it'd probably be back maybe around 2000 so you know, learning to actually meditate, learning how to sort of see um, and visualize things probably was about 18 years before I got to my encounter in heaven. Wow. A big background in having yeah. done that stuff. So I could easily just switch my mind into meditation mode really easily because I learned how to do it. You know, it was my daily sort of routine, if you like. It became you know, easy for me to start with. Mm -hmm. It was really hard. I'd I'd not been brought up in any meditative way and had no idea how to meditate. You know, I'd received some, you know, prophetic pictures and things like that in my my life. So I, I had sort of spiritual stuff. But in terms of me learning to meditate rather than study was a huge shift. Because I'd been conditioned to study the Bible. Mm. Uh, Studying it means trying to figure out what it's saying through usually a concordance or, uh, you know, some sort of what are the words saying in Greek or Hebrew? You know, what does another commentary say about this? You know, then then it's like, okay, what is this talking about God? Are we talking to about it? but I wasn't meditating on it. So it was still very cognitive in me trying to figure out what it was saying. Now I was preaching sermons all through that using that method. What do you want me? What is this about God? What do you want me to say about it? 
doing research and and looking into words and then then coming up with what i felt this is what god wants me to preach on mm -hmm. but that's very different from meditation in that you're not trying to study or figure it out you're you're turning off the left side of your brain and you're engaging the right side of your brain for most people you know that's not easy and if you're right-sided trying to do the other side is not easy if you're naturally right-sided in other words you're naturally creative and find it easy to be imaginative and see things then studying or learning how to figure things out in a problem-solving cognitive way may not be easy either so you know you learn both and in when i started the meditation thing and i learned about left and right brain i i i found an exercise that showed me what predominantly my brain functioned in which was left brain so there's a little thing you can find it on youtube and stuff there's a, like a ballerina who's spinning mm -hmm. a particular way and you look at it and you can see it spinning this way but if you really focus and let right brain people actually see it focusing the other way spinning the other way mm -hmm. Because it's just how the brain perceives something. So I I focused on that image until I could see it both ways. And I could switch on which way just by okay. choosing which way I wanted to see it. Now, I had, could not do that to start with at all. I had no, it, it was just, it happened. The same thing happens sometimes when you see pictures that have two pictures you know, there's mm -hmm. one with an old woman's face and a woman with a hat. Predominantly see one of them. Mm. You've got to sort of look at it and then then you see it. The other picture, it sort of emerges and then it's like you can sort of swap between the two. Mm. But generally, the brain has one that's a predominant picture and it's mm. easier to see that one and you have to concentrate to see the other one. And I, I practiced those things. I, I did quite a lot of that sort of stuff just because I wanted to learn how to switch left, okay. right, left, right, left, right until it became instantly by choice for me. I'm going to look at this in a right brain way. I'm going to look at this in a left brain way. And it's, that's appropriate sometimes. You know, if I'm in my workshop, I use my left brain problem solving to start with because I have experience of how to solve problems. Sometimes mm -hmm. I get stuck. And I think, oh, I have no idea how to fix this. How, how, do I, how do I do this? So then I might then turn to the creative side to come up with a creative solution. Because I've practiced doing that. So then I usually close my eyes and I just think for a moment and I then begin to meditate on the problem that I'm trying to solve and that then become once you solve that problem then that becomes part of your problem solving equipment that you've got your toolbox that you can then use in the future but sometimes creative you know things and if coming to make something you know i'm not that creative in thinking about well what's this going to look like you know it's like debbie will say oh can you make me a box i'm like well what size what dimensions how, what's it for what do you want me to make it out of what's it what do you want me to look like because i don't know what she wants i'll make something functional and she wants something pretty i mean you know if so i i have to say to her sketch it out for me and tell me exactly what you want mm -hmm. otherwise i'll probably make something that will be what i thought about making yeah. not what yeah. she wants so you have to learn to practice mm. all these things it's not an easy process now you know because no. i'm sharing how i learned how to do it yeah it can sound really easy for me but it took me years and years and years of practice to get to the point where it became instinctively easy to be able to engage that way of thinking and that acting you know okay i will persevere yeah persevere. <laughs> persevere. Practice. i really want to Train your senses and it will become yeah. easy. But your spiritual eyes are always engaging. So even yeah. uh, it, it don't think, oh, nothing happened. Something's mm -hmm. always happening when you engage God in a spiritual exercise. 
always because your spirit is able to engage and oh, therefore it's always beneficial even if you don't think it think it is it comes in different ways sometimes mm -hmm. you just find that you know something instinctively you know it and you say well how did i know that and it's because the spirit has given that information to the mind or to the heart to know something you know sometimes it comes as i'm talking about something and i'll say something that i've never said before I don't know, where did that come from and if i if i really want to i can trace back generally where where that came from if i want to i i don't bother anymore because it doesn't really matter where it came from you know i'm more interested therefore in what i now know you know so it happens in different ways sometimes it's like osmosis you absorb things rather than drink them you know sometimes we want oh well i'm drinking this in therefore i know i'm participating and taking it in but actually there's another way of receiving things which is called osmosis which is like a transfer of liquid it from one thing into another and that's sometimes how it happens it's like you're assimilating that spiritual knowledge and then it's just part of you even though you you didn't actually do anything cognitive that you can remember but you know the the knowledge of it and particularly if it's an exercise that you're wanting to get something out of engaging the father or learning engaging sonship or feeling loved then you will just start to feel loved you know it will become more and more a part of you that exercise at the time it may not have been emotional but you receive the flow or the, or the information in a i guess cardiogenosis way from your spirit to your, to your soul just as god can impart stuff to us in a knowledge of the heart so our heart can receive things spiritually in the same way it, we just absorb it if you like and you just you just know and sometimes people can say i just can't pinpoint the when this changed or when i felt different but i do feel different and they can't pin it down to an exact time and i think that's often the you know the drip feeding so sort of drip 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 you know you can have a deluge and you're soaking wet and obviously you know you're soaking wet or you can have a drip 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 and eventually that same amount of water will have gone on you but just in a different way if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help Thank you very much.